Good afternoon, welcome here to Wiscombe Park near Honiton in Devon and this is the National Hill Climb Championship round where we have all the best of the hill climb world here with us today with their cars. It's uh, promoted by Woolbridge Motor Club and we're going to have a local walk around the paddock, see if we can find a few people to chat to. So uh, let's go and have a look. I think we go over here this direction first and see who there is. And uh, I think the first person we can see is Steve Owen. Steve is the designer and constructor of the OMS racing cars. There's quite a few of these here today. So uh, let's see if we can uh, disturb Steve. Steve, got a few minutes? Yes. So you're the designer and constructor of the OMS racing cars. Tell us a little bit about how that came about. How it came about? Um, well, I met Alan Staniforth. Uh, and Alan Staniforth was a massive inspiration who made the terrapin cars and so I got a terrapin um, started hill climbing I was more into motorcycles so I built a motorcycle engine car which became an OMS and it went from there really so this one you've got behind you this is I will tell you this is going out live yep. okay um, this one that you've got behind you this is one of your latest creations tell us a little bit about this so it's an OMS 28 it's got the uh, Cosworth XD engine in it the V8 um, it's very new, we've only used it three times. It's got the Sadev gearbox in it, which is the French gearbox. Um, and it, it's got most of the current parts on it, really. It, it, it's the same chassis as the, uh, as the motorcycle engine 28, but it's a different layup. It's a stiffer tub, it's more heavy duty um, for the power and uh, the weight of the car. Um, and we're just developing it, really, and we're just getting used to it. We're having a few teething problems and... We're finding things out from every every run, but um, hopefully we'll get there. Hopefully we'll get yeah. there. Obviously, yesterday you had a bit of a an awkward moment on a run, and you ended up with a little bit of suspension damage on the front. But all repaired and ready to go again. Yeah, I mean we we, we carry everything with us, so apart from my pride, um, everything else is fixed. Um, and uh, yes, I just it just it's just my fault. I just went off. I just hit the bank and went off. So. Um, so a little bit of uh, driver over exuberance, shall we say? No, I just wasn't watching what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no expert here. I've only been here once before and uh, um, should have known better, really. Yeah, well, thank you for that. We're going to have a look, say, wander up through the paddock, see who there is, thank and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. So uh, walking up through the paddock now, we, we have several other uh, OMS cars. The, the next one we come to here is Trevor Willis's car. And uh, Trevor's car is uh, a previous Hill Climb Championship winning car. At one point it set the fastest times here at Wiscombe. It, it was a Hill record holder. So uh, Trevor obviously not anywhere to be seen at the moment. But I can see another man that's also very interesting. Um, not a driver, oh he's disappeared, uh, but the Hill Climb Championship coordinator. We'll catch up in a minute. So moving on. There's a, a gentleman uh, up here who has been setting the world alight for the last couple of years, and that's Mr. Alex Summers. Alex, we're doing a live stream, so yes. just remember, behave. No, behave right. Yeah. No, Alex is very good. He's a very, very good engineer, excellent driver, and uh, obviously a little bit damp conditions here today. But uh, how's the day going? You enjoying yourself? Yeah, we've got um, two cars we're running today. I've got. Uh, Dave Warburton, number nine, driving my uh, project car, the P40, and then I'm in the Firestorm. So, plenty to think about. Um, but now that it's full wet, now that it's properly rained and there's water on the track, it's a much more kind of predictable day. So, I'm much happier than, than we were yesterday when it was, is it going to rain, is it going to be dry? So, um, yeah, it's going so, so far so good, really. Dave's 44, we're 39, so we're sort of in the conversation. So, so yesterday up until the, the final runs, you were the actual outright hill record. Mm. I, I'm trying to rub this in. The hill yeah, record yeah, no, owner, fine. holder. And uh, Wallace took that away from you by the smallest margin possible, didn't he? Yes, I, I told him how many hundreds he'd beaten it by with a hand signal, which I won't <laughs> um, repeat, but I'm sure you can imagine. Uh, but no, that's the, that's the game, isn't it? That's why we do it. And uh, I nicked it from someone else, I think Will Hall, possibly. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, it's, uh, it's good to see he's uh, the yardstick at the moment and has been for a number of years. So I was surprised to have the record uh, when I got it. Mm. So it's good. And it shows that sort of we're uh, on the Avon tyre now. We're, we're about where we were on the Pirelli, which is great for Avon and great for the sort of dialogue between the two brands. So um, 
good for him and he drove beautifully and he has been all season so you know I was not really surprised um, and if it had to go to anyone then there's there's no nicer bloke to have it as far as I'm concerned. It's a very gentlemanly sport this. Now this is the car you're actually driving today this is a DJ yes. Firestorm yep. and uh, this is a V8 engine one. Tell us a little bit about the car for anybody at home who's uh, not actually ever been to a hill climb they'd look at this and think oh it's a Formula One car which a lot of the concept is very similar isn't it? Yeah I mean the big the, the obvious thing is it, it is a single seater, massive amount of uh, aerodynamic um, performance from the floor and the front and rear wings. Uh, we've got a carbon monocoque. This is actually specifically designed for hill climbing by that chap there in the hood um, holding the tyre gauge. Uh, so this is a DJ Firestorm um, designed and built by two best friends from college, Andy and Dell. Uh, this one has a 1998 IndyCar V8 which, depending on which pub you're in and how, you, how many uh, beers you've had, produces somewhere between 650 and 700 horsepower. So it's 455 kilos thereabouts without me sat in it, considerably more with me sat in it. Um, so, you know, whatever, 1,300 horsepower per tonne without the driver in, so it's, it's um, nippy. Uh, and I think, broadly speaking, all the cars in this class, the, the unlimited class, would be somewhere in that ballpark. Perhaps the goal's a bit lighter, but, um, you know, they're, they're different conceptually, but they look a bit like Formula One cars. The big difference to a Formula One car is this has a five litre fuel tank, which is almost, it's just about enough to get me from there to, to <laughs> there, um, but with not much to spare. And it runs on methanol, which is an alcohol group. So, um, yeah, IndyCar, Americans always use methanol for some reason. Um, it's not turbocharged anymore, so it's naturally aspirated, which is why it sounds so lovely. And it's revs to about 15,000 RPM. So it's a proper, proper bit of kit. Moving on though, yep. to this beauty. This is a car that you've actually designed and you've, it's, the concept's come from you, hasn't it? How, how it should be. Mm. And uh, with the aid of uh, other people and family, you, you've, you've basically built this as a, a trial to, to see, I think, to see if you could improve on what was already out there and uh, to test yourself a little bit, I would have guessed. Uh, yes, uh, definitely. The principle of it was uh, sort of an itch I always wanted to scratch. I, I fell in love with, I think it was about like 10 or 11 years old when I saw the GWR Predator, a grey and white junior car. Um, and I thought, I, I, I want something that looks a bit like that, but I also want to be able to kind of do it myself and figure out how that works. Um, the other big motivator was to get my mother and wife comfortable in a car. So there's a huge amount of ergonomy that's gone into the seating position and pedal ratios and things. To Like my mum's five foot one, and Debbie's, my wife's five foot five. And a lot of these cars are built around six, six and a half foot drivers. Um, I struggle to a certain degree because I'm only five foot six. But that's a, been a huge part of the, the exercise is to do something for us, do something a bit different you know, scratch a sort of passion itch, as it were, but also to, to actually have a, a, a real benefit to, to the girls in the family um, in terms of the ergonomy and, and, and ability to use the controls. Just one example is my mother can't get full throttle in this car without lifting her heel off the ground, off the bottom of the tub, which is kind of challenging. So there's lots of little things that we've done. So it's definitely a family um, orientated project. And uh, the girls and, and the dad have all been involved in the build in some way as well. So. Yeah. That, that's lovely and uh, are we going to see you out in this before the season's out or maybe next year because I know you're doing quite well in the firestorm um, but as you get towards the end of the season you, you get to think oh, I'll go and find an event and do it. it doesn't necessarily have to be a national championship round or, or, or is this in the back of your mind and you're like no at the moment well I have I have two I have done two Lotons two um, one Midland and one B meeting so I've already done it but but the, the real reason for not driving it is that I, I don't want to create another firestorm in terms of the way it functions. Mm -hmm. So if you're building the car for uh, mum and Debbie to be comfortable, if I get in it and go, it's got to be like this, it's not, they, they, again, it's, it's just another, object, yeah, it's effect, just yeah. another compromise that, you know, so to, to have something, so that my mum and Debbie will, will share this car next weekend at Lowton Park um, and I'll be there to make sure it's comfortable for them, not for me. If that That's makes good. sense, but yeah, I might try and do a, a sprint or something at the end of the year. 
possibly. Watch well, this space. Whatever you do, enjoy the rest of your year. Enjoy the rest of your weekend here. Thank you for your time. It's always great to have a chat with you. You're always very giving. Um, it was great to see you. I have to say it, Goodwood in the McMurray. One of the few people that's had the opportunity to drive that superb piece of engineering. And uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about it? Uh, absolutely, if, if you've got time. Um, Goodwood is obviously probably the, is the biggest car festival in the world and I was very fortunate for the last three years to drive the McMurtry Spieling which is an electric fan car that has the record there by my uh, esteemed colleague Mr Max Chilton um, but I've been there as a sort of supporting act in the sense and maybe behind the scenes doing some of the test work uh, we've got a, a pretty full development plan for the for the car so you know we'll, some of the test driving is glamorous like Goodwood some of it's not so glamorous <laughs> Um, but it's all fun and it's, you know, electric's a big thing, obviously. Um, Fan-assisted downforce is going to be a big thing. I think you're going to see a lot more of that for various reasons. But the principle of the fan, I mean, maybe if that car's 500 horsepower, maybe 200 or 300 horsepower at any one time is being wasted by pulling air, air over the wings and so on. The, the fan system creates that downforce with li almost no energy penalty. So it's actually about increasing range and having the same performance but to 30% more range. So when you create that vacuum with a fan, even though the fan has a power, when the vacuum is, is functioning, the, the fan power is very low. And it's significantly lower energy draw than having a big wing, certainly to make two tons of downforce, you know. So um, it's properly cool, it's properly exciting, it's properly groundbreaking. And, you know, the, the record at Goodwood is, is just the beginning. And I, and I hope that I get to be a part of that conversation for, for many years to come. Um, so yeah, uh, just a massive privilege and, and hopefully we get more of our guys and girls to, to Goodwood in the future in some of these, but you know, it's, it's still work in progress, I think. Well, thank you anyway, as I said, and uh, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. We're going to have a wander on there, see if we can find uh, Wallace or somebody like yeah. that. And, uh, you know, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So that was Alex Summers. Um, his mum is actually sat in his car at the moment. So, oh, her car, she's telling me now. She's saying, it's my car. Yeah, so uh, we, won't, we won't disturb Lindsay. She's busy working on something there. So we'll have a walk up through the paddock and see who else there is to chat to. And uh, as we go up, we got, as I say, uh, Alex's car there that he's developed himself. We'll uh, get a bit further up here. I think we'll uh, head up towards the top and see if we can find the man with the number one on his car, Mr. Wallace Mingies. Wallace has uh, got his... Uh, his tent up to, to keep everything dry and uh, as we pass we got some lovely lovely old chevron there beautiful car sports racer design let's see where the gentleman is he's is uh <laughs> that'd be in the outtakes uh, is, is Wallace available anywhere? Is he is he busy? Oh, we're going to have a look. <laughs> so we, this is this is Wallace's lorry. It's uh, obviously quite a, a large vehicle that uh, he has everything in, and uh, there's young Tom hanging through the window. We're, we're doing a live stream. Is Wallace available for a chat? Oh yes. Ah. So, oh, is his lunch just going through the back? <laughs> yeah, no, we checked first. <laughs> so, this is uh, Wallace Mingies. Wallace is the leading British hill climb champion at present, number one on his car, hopefully keeping it there for next year. Leading the championship this year as well, aren't you? Uh, yeah, for now. We're just, what, we're just over a third of the way there, 21 runs out of 30 done, so still a bit to go. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a long way from finished. It may be a long way from finished, but yesterday you, you eclipsed the hill record, which yesterday morning with the weather as it was, none of us thought would be a possibility. Um, but you've done it the tiniest of margins as well, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Um, I think the new tarmac helped it drying out and obviously it being a bit warmer. So yeah, it wasn't a hundredth of a second or two hundredths, I think. So it was no sneaked Alex, actually felt a bit bad to Alex for that. But um, not much different than the times from last year. It's a, it's a bit of a shame today we couldn't all, I'm sure everybody would be chapping at the bit for it today if it stayed dry, but it still might dry up. 
Yeah, it's, as you say, it's, it's, it's damp at the moment, but the clouds are high, so I've got to be helpful for that. So the car, um, basically the same car as last year? Um, it looks that way, yeah. Basically, then that means is no, it's not under the skin. <laughs> we're all listen. We're always working hard away from the rounds. We do we do quite a lot of work that that doesn't get seen, um, both in preparation and uh, trying different things. So the car the car evolves from season to season. No big changes, but little bits and damper tweaks here and there and stuff. All makes a difference, doesn't it? Yeah, and not all of it makes it good. So you've got to kind of kiss a few frogs to find out about our set and then keep pushing and. You know, different places it present different talents for setup. So, yeah. So for Wiscombe, I, do you 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 totally changed the car because last week was it um, Jersey and Guernsey, weren't you? Uh, is it much of a change between the venues on the setup? Yeah, Jersey's a really specific set of challenges. It's mega slippy because of the open road. Uh, Guernsey's a bit different. It's not too different here, but it's kind of almost a hill in three bits. You know, up from here up to gate, once you need one set up, and then from from gate all the way to saw bench so first right. mm -hmm. is very very different and a good challenge. And then you also got heavy braking first gear to you know flatten third and into fourth, and then heavy braking and first gear again for saw bench. So again, the car you can't you've got to set the car up as a compromise for all of that. So how many gears do you actually use on Wiscom? We'll clip fourth just to settle the car down so we don't get too close to the limiter. Um, third, fourth and fifth are all really close as gears go so we'll just clip fourth and then um, back down to first at the end of the straight. So I, I was watching from Sawbench yesterday afternoon when you, you went up on your record breaking run and I noticed you're, you're very tidy and you just keep a very measured distance away from the curbs right the way through. You, some of them were running and just clipping the curbs but you just do that little bit. I mean, is that something you consciously do or do you just look for the best line? I think sometimes with the two hairpins it's quite difficult to place the car if under heavy braking. I mean we locked up really hard in practice there but you're looking to use, because they're so tight and you're trying to get a drive out of it, um, you're looking to use all the roads you possibly can and you're going to be into traction from the back end coming out on exit so it's kind of balancing that and throttle without rubbing the banks because uh, we've hit them a few times and um, the stone here it manages to puncture tyres really easily it's, and it's part of the challenge of the hill so you only get away with touching the bank so many times and we've probably used all our lives at that so <laughs> we'll see what this afternoon brings with it yeah it's a bit damp it is like i say the clouds are high now so it's drying out uh, obviously it's not going to be a totally dry run like we had yesterday at the end of the day but uh, hopefully you'll 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 still stay up there and le leading the championship when we go away from here this weekend uh, yeah that we will be mathematically but as i say we've got another eight rounds after this weekend to keep pushing on and everybody's trying really hard and you know, all the boys are super fast. Yeah, one of the things I noticed amongst all the hill climbers, we were talking to Alex just now, and he said he couldn't wish for a better person to take the hill record away from him. He said, Alex, you know, he, he said, Wallace is such a nice guy. And it, there is a lot of friendship, even though you're rivals, isn't there, amongst the paddock? I think that there's huge friendships throughout the whole paddock, and um, we're not going into a corner at the same time as each other. And a lot of things like the Channel Islands brings everything together. Alex only saying that because I had to buy him a pint for taking his record <laughs> yesterday. So he got a pint of, I think it's Otters. Was down there. Otters are very nice yeah, ale. Did so. you try any? Uh, no, I'm, I'm unfortunately a bit laggery. That's too much for me. But I did have a pint at the end of it with Alex. So no, it's, it's a really close community and everybody gets on really, really well. So, you know, fantastic family sport. Well, thank you for your time. Um, we'll, have a, if you're all right, we'll have a wander through and look at your car in a moment with the, the camera. And uh, good luck this afternoon. And... Let's see if you can uh, go out of here with maximum points again. You've already got one extra point for taking a hill record, so 11 points yesterday and another 10 today won't do any harm, will it? Listen, just, just doing the best we can. I think it could be a lottery, but we'll just do the best we can and have fun. The big thing's about for us to have fun when we come away. It's a long way to come. Everybody down here is super nice, really like coming here. Cracking hill, you know, invested back into it with a brand new surface. Huge amount of investment, so it is much appreciated by the competitors and we enjoy coming, so... I don't think we'll see any more points, but if we go home with having done the best we can, then we'll be happy. And there's only one other thing that you keep forgetting every year, and I do ask Robbery you... Robbery tarts. They got taken off me at customs. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's always porous to bring me a strawberry tarts down, and it never happens. One day it will. So we're going to have a look at Wallace's car now. Thank you very much, Wallace. Hey, Wallace have a good yeah. day. I'll just speak to you. Okay. Thanks. So let's have a, a wander through. So... 
This is the Gould. This is Wallace's Gould, which he's campaigning this year. And uh, it's got the, the V8 um, IndyCar engine in the back. But, uh, lovely shape beautiful car if nobody's ever seen it if you're here at Wiscom what you know watching the live stream in the bar or somewhere wander up and have a look and uh, if not if you're at home just remember they'll be back next year you can come and see them all again next year but uh, beautiful car well engineered a very very uh, complex front wing with lots of aero going on there and uh, as you can see they're on on wet tires which is the groove tires because it has been a very wet day. If it dries out, they may go over to the slick tyres because quite often the slick tyres, even on a damp surface, give more of an advantage than the, the racing wet tyres. So. Right, so let's have a wander across to the other side of the paddock now. So as we look down through the middle of the paddock, I said we've got this very fine chevron here, which is from the, the sort of like 1970s. Beautiful car, lots of uh, chrome and aluminium when you get in close looking at it. Really, really aesthetically pleasing. So we're going to see if we can catch up with young Scott Moran. Uh, he was down here a short time ago. This is the car that Scott's driving this year he's sharing it with Graham Wynn Graham is actually there leaning on the car at the moment so it looks like he's fueling it so we won't get too close to that and uh, I can't see Scott in there I can see his father Roger Moran but let's have a, a bit of a look at the car while Graham's refueling again another gold chassis very very popular in the hill climbing world oh there's Scott Scott, would you? This is, this is a live stream going out, so... Uh, no swearing. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Scott's former hill climb champion, how many times? Uh, six. Yeah. You had to think about that. Ago. Yeah, a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it was a long time ago. But uh, you're, you're out in the gold here. You're sharing it with, with Graham there, who's just refueling it for you, obviously. Yeah. Um, how's your day progressing so far? I know it's been a bit damp this morning yes. and different conditions to yesterday. Yes, yeah, so, yeah, so I'll be honest, it's much better today because it was properly wet this morning. So it's, uh, yeah, yesterday, the first couple of runs were pre pretty mixed. So it was very slippery and they had lots of incidents and the marshals tended with you know they had a lot to deal with yesterday so that was much appreciated um thankfully i wasn't one of them but yeah this morning when it was properly wet we could put the wets on and the avon wet is an excellent tire so uh, uh, it works really well in these conditions and uh, now we, wallace again was quickest but i was second behind him a bit a little bit behind again but yeah it's uh, it's all, all practice at the minute so yeah so this morning obviously been practiced anybody who's not been to a hill climb they, they start with a practice run and then move on to the time runs later in the day and the practice runs give them a, a feel for the actual surface the conditions and what they can do how far they can push the car and then when they get to time runs they can go into it more, much more confident and then this afternoon your time runs your you do a time run which counts towards what we call the top 12 runoff would you like to explain yeah. the top 12 runoff to anybody who's never been to a hill climb yeah. uh, so the top 12 runoff that's um, anybody who's registered for the british championship uh, the you, your class run is a qualifying run and then you, the fastest 12 will go to the, the championship points and then the top 10 will score points, so uh, 10 for first. If you break a record, you get an extra point, which Wallace did yesterday, so he had 11. Um, and then it goes down to one point for 10th. And then you've got, uh, the last, unfortunately, the last two, 11th and 12th, don't score anything. So, um, But yeah, so that's what we're all here, you know, certainly us guys, you know, we're, that's what here we're here for is the, you know, the points for the British Championship. Um, and, that's, and then there's the British, uh, the Hill Climb Cup. Uh, that's that's running that's sort of alongside the British Championship. Well, that's a class-based championship. So again, they they score points for each class run they do. So they're positioning class again. So I think that's, I think that's ten points again for a win. And down to I th I'm not sure where they score. I'll be honest. I should know this, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure where they score down to. But yeah, it's uh, yeah, it might be the top eight, six or eight in the class. So yeah. yeah. So 
a little bit about the car. It's four litre, yes? Yeah, this, uh, this one's a Judd. Uh, so where Wallace is, is a, like an ex-Indy car engine. Um, this is a Le Mans engine in this one, so it's a Judd four litre, uh, normally aspirated. It's about, it's, this one's running on uh, normal pump fuel, this is unleaded, right? whereas some of the other cars like Wallace's are running on methanol. Um, but this, we, Judd prefers to use that, so um, that's what we're, we're running at the minute. Uh, the car, the, the tub is a Gould GR59, which is designed primarily for hill climbing. Uh, it was, I think it was originally pent for the Formula E sir, um, circuit racing, but that sort of never took the Gould side, of, um, that chassis was never taken into that, but uh, it, it lends itself very well to hill climbing, because you can put, it, there's bike engines with, um, you can put a bike engine in there, or a, or a V8, or, you know, pretty much anything, I think they can transfer the back end over to whatever you want in there um, but the car it's about 420 kilos and it's about 700 horsepower so it's it's power to weight is pretty phenomenal really so you say it's a Judd in there I mean Judd spent time in Formula One didn't they is it an ex Formula One engine or something that they used in a, a different formula and if so do you know the history of it um, no this was a new engine so this was but this it was um, I think they primarily for the Le Mans series, so it's uh, it's a it's more of an endurance. It's nothing like what we're doing. So, <laughs> so, but I think they, you know, they're so kind of happy, sort of five years between rebuilds because it's not doing anything like the mileage it's doing as a as a Le Mans engine. So, so that engine gives you good longevity. Yeah, yeah. Fingers crossed. Touch wood. All yeah. that, you know. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so far it's it's been pretty, yeah, pretty bomb proof. So it's it's yeah, and it's and it's it's very drivable. Yeah. So it's it's very it's got a lot of torque at the bottom end. Um, so these conditions, it should hopefully help us a little bit with uh, yeah, getting in the, out in the wet. Well, thank you for that and a bit of a view of your car. Uh, enjoy your afternoon and uh, be very, very interesting to see the outcome at the end of the day. Who's yeah. done what, won't it? Yeah, well, ho hopefully we'll have, a, yeah, we'll have another sticker on there for a win. But yeah, we'll see what we can do. Yeah, thank good you, luck. Thank, thank you very much. You. All right. So strolling a bit further down the paddock let's have a look see what uh, else we can find down this side we, ha we have some local uh, drivers now the purple car there is Andy Short who comes from Exeter so one of our locals um, he does quite well with uh, his, his, that's an OMS which uh, we went and saw Steve the designer of OMS earlier so I'm, I'm looking now at Darren Gumley now Darren Darren was here yesterday and he's talking to Stuart Webster. Now, Stuart is part of the British Hill Climb Championship. Um, yeah. So, he, would you like to tell us a little bit about the championship, how it comes about, how it works, and sure. uh, what the sort of like the, the, I say, the parameters of the championship are? Yeah, sure. So, uh, this is a live stream. So, yeah. um, everybody. Yeah. Hello, everybody in the world. Yes. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the British Hill Climb Championship uh, is the oldest. Uh, British Championship. So it started in 1947. Uh, first time it came to Wiscombe is in 1962. Uh, and uh, we, we are very proud of running that championship for that length of time. Uh, we go right across the country. So we go from uh, um, Scot we, in Scotland, we do Dune. In Northern Ireland, we do Cr uh, Crigantlet. We go to the Channel Islands with Bouley Bay and uh, Val de Terre. And we do various places, including the southwest here at Wiscombe, uh, across, the, across England as well. Yeah. So how many registered contenders do you have uh, to do the championship? So for the British Championship this year we've got record numbers for both the Cup, which is the class-based championship, and the British Championship itself. We've got more than 60 for the British Championship and we've got 150 plus uh, for the Cup, so the class-based championship. So we're having a very good year, the highest numbers uh, that we've had registered for the championship ever. That's good. I mean, the sport is, is, it is a healthy sport now, isn't it? And there's a lot of um, change or uh, uh, variance, I will say, between what you can use. I mean, you can look at people in a very small car, small capacity, up to these big racing cars, haven't we? Is there a spread within that championship with a, a proportion going one way to the other? Uh, the, probably the most popular class in the championship right now is the 1100cc racing car class. That's probably where you've got the biggest bang for your buck. Uh, you can pick up an engine out of a motorcycle, you can pop it in there re relatively. Uh, if you want to be like Darren, uh, you, you'll have to tune that engine, uh, but you can do it uh, untuned if you so wish and still go very, very fast. Uh, so the 1100cc class at times this year has had 20, 24 entries, which is an awful lot for one class. 
uh, that's definitely the one with the most growth in the recent past. But at the top end, uh, we're very fortunate as well with uh, 1600s like uh, um, Darren's car, right the way through to the two litres, some of them turbocharged, some of them not. And then we've got the un unlimited capacity cars as well, where we've got a really good spread of cars, which cost you a little bit more than an 1100cc racer to run, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's horses for courses, as they say. Um, you know, the generally you see the the bigger cars actually winning the the events and setting the fastest times, but the smaller cars and people like Darren, who is a very seasoned competitor, often gets into the top 12 runoffs with his 600 cc car against the 400 or four litre 600 700 um, horsepower cars, and uh, it, it, it does show that it, it's not so much oh, all about it the the amount of horsepower you've got it's Definitely. the drivability and your ability of course uh, absolutely if you if you look at some of the cars like darren's and paul hames's car i mean paul hames's car if, if you've spoken to paul already his car is 325 kilos without the driver in it and he's got a 480 horsepower 1300 cc turbocharged bike engine in the back of it so his bang for buck is pretty damn good his hand horsepower per ton is fantastic not quite as good as the uh, as the goulds with their 700 horsepower but not far away again because uh, yeah. there's a lot of it isn't it it's horsepower per ton is uh, the yeah. thing and you know it's moving that mass isn't it really absolutely uh, and hill climbs is all about uh, get, getting to um, top speed very quickly and getting down to a reasonable speed to take the corners very quickly and if you look at some of the uh, bigger cars as well there's an awful lot of very clever aero on the bigger cars if you look at the goulds particularly and the quality of the aero which is on those cars uh, for low speed speed um, downforce is fantastic really well, good. well thank you for that Stuart and uh, great that you bring the championship here every year to, to Wiscom and Woolbridge Motor Club always appreciate it and it's always a, a great draw for people to come and see yes. and uh, we'll have a little chat with Darren now shall we yeah. Darren Gunley, 1600cc car against all the big boys uh, you got in the top 12 yesterday didn't you yeah yeah and uh, you, you always I break myself, I break myself going into Martini and I took the slip road. That's got to be a very fine line when to choose whether to go round the corner or up the escape road. I just went out of talent. <laughs> I, um, I wanted to gain some time around that last bend and been struggling with the weather and just, just struggling this weekend. And tra trucking on up there and I was like, oh, I'm not going to make it. So I just bailed out. You, you just have to to decide yeah. don't you that very last second I saw that slip road I thought I'm going there yeah so instead of into the tire wall yeah well that's a better way of doing it though isn't it because it doesn't cost so much you don't end up having to do rebuilds and things like that no there's a lot of accidents yesterday a lot of us got away with it you know the same car as mine the Coopers had a, a good one so they've had all my spares Unfortunately, they never got back out. Someone else was damaged, which I never had. I just want to go home in one piece and yeah. shells lead to enjoy, enjoy the weekend. Okay, yeah, the enjoy, just it's going to rain, rains. We're all in it, we're all the same. And I've, I'm, I've got the 1100 record, and we cannot get nowhere near it this weekend. So, now the conditions now, obviously, there's not much chance of actually. Uh, sort of pulling out the bag and getting anything this afternoon is there no i mean the weather is going to play into people's hands this afternoon mm. and it could be our end it might not be you know well let's hope you get into the top 12 this afternoon make the top don't have any issues um i know we've spoke before on saw bench where i'm commentating and yeah. you you've had a problem as you've approached yeah. saw bench and coming end up standing there <laughs> looking out with me but Get to the top, yeah. enjoy your afternoon, and I'd love to see you in the top 12 again. Hopefully. Hopefully. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I can see we're actually starting to get the cars lined up again now, so I think we'll uh, say that's uh, a bit of a, a tour around the paddock. Hopefully it's been informative and you've enjoyed it. And uh, please remember to, to watch the live stream, and we will be back uh, again here with the Nationals in a year's time. In the meantime, um, Speed on Screen will be beaming you other events throughout the year just watch their website